Section 6.8 is on graphing radical functions. The square root function is the inverse of the quadratic function that has a restricted domain. Here's why. This first graph that we see here is the graph of f of x equals x squared, the parent function for quadratic functions. Now if we were to graph its inverse, it would look like this. So the inverse of f of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of x. However, this graph fails the vertical line test. You'll notice a vertical line intersects the graph in two points at the same time. Therefore, y equals plus or minus the square root of x is not a function. So in order to get the square root function, oops, sorry about that. In order to get the square root function, we want to restrict the domain. In other words, say, I'm only going to use certain values of x. And the values of x I'm going to use are x is greater than or equal to 0. If I do that on the basic quadratic function, I get just the right-hand side of the parabola. Then when I take the inverse of that, I get the top part here of what we had up above. And this is indeed a function because it does pass the vertical line test. So the graph of a square root function is the graph of the, the inverse of the graph of the quadratic function with a restriction on the domain for x being greater than or equal to 0. So this one right here is the parent graph of the square root function. Take a look at some examples. Oh, before we do that, let's talk about transformations. So we can do transformations on both the square root function, which is y equals the square root of x, and a general radical function, which which is y equals the nth root of x. These are similar to transform transformations we made on, for example, the quadratic and the absolute value functions. So the parent function is listed here. And notice that if we put a negative out front, it reflects it over the x-axis, flips it over the x. And we can multiply by uh, a value a out front. And if a is greater than 1, it's going to stretch it or make it wider. In other words, further away from the x-axis. If a is a value that is a fraction between 0 and 1, then it's going to shrink that or compress it and make it closer to the x-axis. We can also do horizontal and vertical translations by h and k. So let's take a look at several examples here. I want you to graph each function using transformations. So here we have y equals 2 times the square root of x plus 1 minus 2. Looking at this, I can see that it has a translation of left 1. Remember, that's the number inside, but it's like x minus h, so this is like x minus a negative 1. And outside, it's going negative 2 means it's going down 2. And it also has a stretch by a factor of 2. And that's the 2 that's being multiplied out front. OK, so let's go ahead and graph the basic parent function, y equals the square root of x. So let me just make a quick little table of values here. So when x is 0, y is 0. When x is 1, y is 1. And I'm not going to use 2, because that's going to give me a, an irrational number. So I'm going to pick values of x that I can actually take the square root of. So I like 4 because the square root of 4 is going to give me 2, and I like 9 because the square root of 9 is going to give me 3. So let's go ahead and graph that. 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, 4, 2, and 9, 3. So there's our parent function, y equals the square root of x. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to first transformation I'm going to do on this is to do the stretch by a factor of 2. So that means I'm going to multiply every y value by 2. So when I multiply by 2, that's going to give me 0, 2, 4, and 6. And I'm going to switch colors here just so that we can see what that's going to be. So that's going to give me 0, 0, which is this point right here. That's going to give me the point 1, 2, and the point 4, 4, and the point 9, 6. So that graph right there is y equals 2 times the square root of x. Now I'm going to take that one and I'm going to move each of those, value, each of those points left 1 and down 2. 
Let me switch colors again. How about a nice blue? How does that look? Yeah, that's going to be fine. So each one of these points, I'm going to move it left one and down two. Left one and down two. Left one and down two. And left one and down two. So my final graph is this one right here. And I can't quite squeeze it in there, but that is y equals 2 times the square root of x plus 1 minus 2. And that's how I would graph it using transformations. I would do my stretch first and then do the moving it left, right, up, down. Okay, let's take a look at another example here. Here we have a cube root function. We have y equals 2 times the cube root of x plus 2 minus 3. My parent function is y equals the cube root of x. And let's see what that looks like. Let's make a little table of values for that. So I can do 0 because the cube root of 0 is 0. I can do 1 because the cube root of 1 gives me 1. And I think the next thing I'd want to do is 8, because the cube root of 8 gives me 2. But I can also do some negative values here. I can actually do negative 1, because the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. And the cube root of negative 8 is a negative 2. So let's go ahead and graph those. So 0, 0, 1, 1, 8, 2, and negative 1, negative 1, and negative 8, negative 2. So my parent function looks like this. Go right over here. That's y equals the cube root of x. Now, going back to my problem here, again, I'm going to have a, uh, a stretch by a factor of 2. And I'm going to move left 2. That's the minus 2 inside here, x minus a negative 2. I'm going to move left 2 and down 3. So let's do our stretch first. So that means I'm going to multiply every one of my y values by 2. So this is going to be 2 times y is going to give me 0, 2, 4, negative 2, and negative 4. And let's go ahead and graph that. I'll do this one in red. Okay, so that's going to give me 0, 0, 1, 2, 8, 4, and negative 1, negative 2, and negative 8, negative 4. So that's this function, and that's y equals 2 times the cube root of x. And then for my final graph, I'll go back to that blue, I'm going to do left 2 and down 3. So every point, I will move left 2 and down 3. And I'm working off the red graph. Left 2 and down 3. I'm seeing a little overlap here. Uh, left 2 and down 3. Left 2, down 3. And left 2 and down so that's going to give me, trying to focus here just on the blue, it's going to give me something that looks like this. And that's y equals 2 times the cube root of x minus plus 2 minus 3. Okay? And let's take a look at our last example here. This one's kind of interesting because I have y equals, let me get back to black here, the cube root of x plus, I'm sorry, 8x plus 32 minus 2. Notice that I can rewrite that as y equals the cube root of, I can actually factor an 8 out of my radicand, 8 times x plus 4 minus 2. And I can actually break that up. I could say that this is the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 
x plus 4, that whole thing, minus 2, and I know that the cube root of 8 is 2, so I can actually rewrite this as 2 times the cube root of x plus 4 minus 2. And now I need to graph that. Notice that I have my parent function, y equals the cube root of x, but then I can also see that I have y equals 2 times the cube root of x, and I actually did that up above, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and use that as my starting point. So 2 times the cube root of x, I believe, was these points here. So I had 0, 0, uh, 1, 2, and 8, 4, is that right? 8, 4, and then 1, negative 2, and 8, negative 8, negative 4. So that's this one right here. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, now from here I'm going to go left 4, because that's x minus 4, and down 2. And I'll go ahead and do that in my blue. Oops, wrong. Okay, and each point here, I will move left 4. Right, that's it, we know what we're doing. Left 4 down 2. From this point, left 4 down 2. From this point, left 4 down 2. From here, left 4 down 2 and from here left 4 down 2 is going to give me something out here and so I will have a graph that looks like this oops sorry about that okay and that is y equals the cube root of 8x plus 32 minus 2 and what we saw in this graph was that it was possible. I didn't have to actually deal with the 8x plus 32. I could actually simplify it and come up with this graph right here. So in this section, we took a look at how to graph radical functions, the fact that the square root function is actually the inverse of the quadratic function with a restricted domain. If we don't say that x has to be greater than or equal to 0, we're going to end up with an inverse that is not a function. Then we took a look at several examples of how to graph square root functions and something from a general radical function.